the, the nutrient issue is a, is a very big one and I think is, a, is something that we're really struggling with as a nation. The climate change question is also extremely important. Another one that I would look to is um, uh, the issue of the, the balancing act between uh, water uh, for use out of the stream versus um, the needs of the ecosystem in the stream. Traditionally, the allocation of water in the, in the United States has been between the, the, the cities and their need for water, industries, particularly electric power and their need for water for cooling, uh, and, and agriculture, which is a tremendous uh, user of water. Um, and, and they would, by various legal method, mechanisms, the water would be allocated among those uses but there was not necessarily any consideration given, given to water for the river itself and the ecosystem that the river supports. Today, our social values and our legal system require us uh, uh, to think about what the, what the fish need. Uh, one of the ways I like to look at it is that the fish now has a seat at the negotiating table along with the farmer, along with the cities, along with industry. And the question, whether it's in a negotiating table or in a courtroom, is, well, how much water does the fish need? Um, and that's not an easy question to answer, because it's not just a set amount of water all the time. In fact, the, the, the organisms in the river need variability in the flow. They need low flows. They need high flows. They need these kinds of changes from season to season, and understanding how Cha differences in the way we manage our rivers will affect ecosystems is a very, very challenging scientific question, which is critical to balancing out water needs and, and water demands um, all over the country, not just in the arid parts of the country, but even here uh, in the much more humid east, these questions of the need for water for the ecosystems, very challenging scientific question, and I'm really pleased that USGS, our water scientists and our biological scientists, along with other folks like the Nature Conservancy, uh, are working together uh, to deal with that question. One more major water issue that I want to mention that's very important to the USGS is the question of long-term water availability, particularly as affected by the depletion of groundwater. Um, Groundwater is, a, is something that's hard for people to understand uh, because they can't see it. And in some places, people pump groundwater, say, for their home, and, and it has relatively little long-term effect on the availability of water for their neighbors or for future generations. But there are also parts of the country where groundwater is being withdrawn, either for our cities or for agriculture, and, and we're withdrawing from storage. In a way, it's, it's really mining. It's like coal mining or gold mining or any of these other kinds of resource extractions. We're drawing from a pool of water which has been in the ground for centuries and millennia and even millions of years. Um, and the drawing down of that water supply has effects on, f on the availability of water for future generations. And it also has effects on our surface water and our ecosystems because the withdrawal of water from our aquifers can easily end up having an effect on the, the flow in streams. Because you know, if you think about it, why is there water in a stream on a day when it isn't raining? Well, the water that's in that stream on a day when it isn't raining is really groundwater. And it's water coming out of those aquifers. And as we draw those aquifers down, we're having an effect on stream flow and that needs to be taken into consideration. The science of understanding that depletion of groundwater and its impacts um, is, is very difficult science, and we're needing to look at very, very large spatial scales, like uh, areas of the size of the Central Valley of California, for example, very large spatial scales and very long time scales that last decades and even centuries. Um, very scientifically challenging, but one of the exciting frontiers that I'm very proud of my colleagues in the USGS who have really advanced our understanding of the impact of groundwater withdrawals on the aquifer and also on surface water and in fact on ecosystems.